Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the FA18 Seahorn. It's early November 2020 and we've had recently added in the initial implementation of the Azimuth over Elevation DDI page. So first of all, how to get into that page. I'm going to be using it on my left DDI. First of all, we could go to air to air mode and we can go back and under tactical menu, we've got Azimuth over Elevation, click there. Or we could be, for instance, in, I don't know, the stores page and we can press SCS sensor control switch left to default to this page. We have the attack radar on the right and this format is what we call a B-scope. We are positioned there facing that way. That way is distance, in this case 40 miles, and that is 40 miles there, 0 miles there. That is right in terms of azimuth, that is boresight in terms of azimuth, and that is left in terms of azimuth. In terms of graphics, elevation is not displayed because this is of course a top-down display. If you want elevation, you'll have to kind of click on one of these guys or highlight one of these contacts and it will tell you the elevation in text. This is a boresighted method, so we're still placed there, but we're now looking forward. So that is now up, that's down, that's azimuth left, that's azimuth right. And in this case, we don't have any range shown graphically. Crossed in the center here is, of course, our bore site. That would be considered, as we can see here, zero degrees right, zero degrees down. We go left, 30 degrees, left, 60 degrees, left, 70 degrees, and the opposite, the other side. Elevation, which is also going to be in angle, in degrees, this is going to be zero. This line here is going to be the minimum viewable in this case minus 15 degrees and as dynamic we can change that and up here is going to be the maximum viewable plus 15 degrees and to keep our situation awareness we know boresight here is currently heading 267 degrees magnetic now this yellow box here shows the extent in degrees elevation and degrees azimuth of our current radar coverage and because this is intrinsically linked to our tack radar here, they are both the same thing, just from different angles. If I change one, it changes the other. So, for example, I've currently got a total azimuth coverage of 80 degrees. If I change that to 140, you can see 70 degrees, 70 degrees, 140. Or 20, 10 degrees left, 10 degrees right of bore sight. So the first thing I'm going to do is configure that to be optimal for our hostiles that we can see. And it's going to be... 60 degrees I think is going to cover everything and it's going to keep it as optimal with the best B-sweep refresh rate. We can also from the attack radar control our elevation of coverage in degrees. It's done in bars. Each one of these sweeps is a bar and a bar is about 3.5 degrees if there's more than one bar or about 5 degrees if there's one bar. So let's go to one bar. We can see we've got about 5 degrees of coverage there with that plus 15, that minus 15. Two bars, we've got whatever that is, seven degrees, 3.5 times two. Uh, we've got 14 degrees, and I can't do that in my head, about 20 degrees or so. Note what happens if we change the elevation scale. We've now got plus 30, minus 30, 70, five degrees, back to 15. Now, we've got a good idea of the spread in terms of elevation of our contacts here. We can see all of our contacts there. You just have to trust me, they are all there. So we now know that we don't need six bars. That's a waste of refresh rate. That will slow the refresh rate and reduce the effectiveness of the radar. So what we can do is go down to one bar. They'll all fit in one bar. Much better refresh rate, much better radar. We can also rescale in this case and go down to probably five. We can encapsulate everything in five degrees, five degrees now. Um, and in the current azimuth. So that's set our radar up as most efficiently as we can. The next thing I want to show is that we can offset the bias of our radar antenna here. Currently our radar antenna is biased zero degrees right, zero degrees down, so basically smack ban in the center of the bore side. But what if I went to, for instance, TWS here and I assigned my TDC to my right MFD with SCS right and bias the antenna over to, say, the right here and look what's happened you can see we've now biased the antenna to 17 degrees right and uh, zero degrees down now if i wanted to bias the elevation of the radar then i could radar elevation control up and down and you can see i'm now pushing our coverage zone up six degrees bias or down seven degrees bias and i will now recenter it okay so we're back to standard now we're on range while we'll search and we've recentered our antenna to zero zero 
Next thing to say is that the contacts, or the correct name would be the track files, are displayed basically the same as they are in the radar or the SA page. You can see each contact has a firing order number and a coalition. Only have onboard coalition IFF at the moment because we don't have any data link partners, or surveillance aircraft, and currently none have been IFF'd or coalition confirmed, so they are all currently unknown with the half square on top and the yellow color. Next I'd like to show what happens if we lock one of these targets. So we can do it from this screen or from this screen. But before we do that, I'd like to get the teapot up. So Fleur activate, because that's going to come in play. So we'll use the left screen, shall we? No, let's use the right screen. So I'm gonna lock that target on the left there. Looks good, move it over there. TDC, no, he's going away, that's a bad idea. Let's try another one, that guy there. Let's lock him. And I did the worst possible one because it's uh, a bunch are uh, merged on top of each other there. But what we've done is created the guy that we clicked on as launch and steer. We can tell that because he'll have a little star. Now, if we can't see that very well, what we can do is expand on the launch and steer. If we've got a launch and steer guy selected or a guy that's bugged, we could say, we can expand like that. And you can see now it's still not much better. Oh, it's because it's, uh, it's four guys in formation. There's a guy there, there's a guy there, there's a guy there, there's a guy there. And I've got that one there. Uh, information as the star so that is launch and steer now interestingly as you know when I select a guy the teapot will lock to him now and do it automatically so if I were to zoom in here I wonder if I can see him and I can uh, it's gonna be a no it's fine it's got it and here's a flanker you can see coming towards me it's a little bit buggy at the moment but we'll live with it in fact that's a little bit too buggy we're gonna come out of that that's the best we're going to zoom in at the moment now what if we want to change target well what i can use is the as you know the nose will steer button to cycle which of these contacts in the firing order is launch and steer so let's press it we've changed to now that one up there and you can see i'm zoomed in and it's a bear flanking right to left let's press it again we've now got that guy there in the firing order locked and as to say you can see his angels there and his speed there as it shows in the attack radar as well and he's heading towards us he's hot um the fleur representation is shown in the as elevation screen as that circle there as well as that we've got some of the uh, radar base information on the guy who we have locked or the guy with launch and steer and that is the closing velocity there in knots the range there in nautical miles and the heading of the hostile there and just for fun we'll cycle for a few more we'll try and get our money's worth with that teapot we've got a guy there on the left Guy there, middle again, guy there, that's one of the flankers where we can't see him, guy there, and so on. Uh, one more thing I've just spotted, that guy there has just appeared as a friendly, you can see the dome on top, so you can see the IFF uh, symbology coming through there. Now until this point we've been in the radar sub-level with the radar as the main sensor, but what if we wanted to be in the FLIR sub-level? So, well I can choose that there to toggle to the FLIR, we've now got IFF and the FLIR, and you can see that the FLIR circle is now bright and the radar coverage is dull. If we went back, we could see it would be vice versa. Interestingly, if we go to the FLIR, we can also change the field of view from the FLIR from this button here. We can tell the FLIR essentially where to aim. Do we want it to aim at the L and S? Uh, in that case, yes, and that's going to be defaulted. That's obviously following our current L and S. And again, as you saw, we can change the different target and the FLIR will follow. If we want to bore sight the flow, we can do that as well and click there. I'm not going to do that because I don't want to lose the track on that target. Also, in the FLIR sub-level, we can click on FLIR display here and it will actually change this DDI to the FLIR, but we don't need it in this case because we've got it down here. Again, if we were in the radar sub-level, then we can go to the stores page. Also, in both sub-levels, we have a field of view boxable button here. All it appears to do is remove the radar extent coverage. And that's it. Now, in the future, there's going to be heavy IFF integration, and these buttons will start working. IFF there. We've got ID information there. We've got IFF selection there. I think this is all to do with the automatic IFF that will be implemented in a few months. We'll have an IFF declutter here, a reset here that will presumably work as well. We have an IFF coverage in terms of azimuth, so we'll be able to change that 40 degrees, 80 degrees, 140 degrees, and so on. And we've also got a launch and steer int and auto int, which are to do with IFF and don't do anything yet either. And the last thing we'd like to show you today is the fact that we can, we have another method to center our scan on our uh, azimuth over elevation page. So the first thing I'm gonna do is reassign TDC to the left page with SCS left. I'm then gonna move our cursor about with our TDC. I'm gonna work, say, there, so away from the targets. 
I'm going to press TDC depress once. It's replaced with a, and it went a little bit too fast, so let me try that again. Down here, pause. So this is our centering cross here, and it's saying that what we've done is move so that the top limits of our elevation scan are going to be 26,000 feet because we've only been working in degrees so far and this bottom bit here which is about minus three degrees by the looks of it is going to be at 12,000 feet ASL so 12,000 feet ASL 26,000 feet ASL so if you could use this for instance if you knew a target was out to the left here between those two altitudes you could place the box over here to try and find him and we can see that we are offset left of the ball site of the aircraft by 38 degrees that's all we've got to show. We'll update this when we get more functionality. I hope that was useful and see you later.